Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over all the May anticipated manga releases. So let's get started. First one on the list, we have an Alien Books release. Last month we talked about their debut in the manga publishing space, and here we have another book coming out, Kerberos in the Silver Rain Volume 1. This was originally published back in 2011 to 2014, however, it is still on hiatus. There have only been three volumes released so far in this action sci-fi seinen series, which focuses heavily on martial arts and military combat. This is a story written by Lita Aikawa and under parentheses Naked Ape and art by Barry Starr. In the near future, the Japanese government has succeeded in discovering and monopolizing a new form of energy known as Psy. To protect this new energy from rival forces, the Japanese government created a three-man elite force known as Cerberus. This team consists of the Princess Sakuya, Goto, and Leon. Goto and Leon support Sakuya, who experienced a traumatizing past that still haunts her daily, yet she is the deadliest fighter out of the three. These three fight side by side in this epic sci-fi world. Obviously we don't know when this series will wrap up, but there's three volumes, the setting's pretty interesting if you like sort of the military sci-fi aspect to it, and the art looks pretty nice too, worth checking out in my opinion. Next up we have an anthology release, this is Star Wars Visions, the manga. This is published by Viz Media, it came out in 2022, and it consists of just one singular volume, four chapters inside, in this seinen compilation based on Star Wars. Story and art by Kamome Shirahama, Keisuke Sato, Yusuke Osawa, and Haruichi. So this is the manga adaptation of Star Wars Visions, which was a collaborative effort of getting different animation studios to create their own one-shot adventures in the Star Wars universe. The first season focused on uh, Japanese anime studios, the second one opened it up to everybody out there in the world, and now we have the manga version bringing their vision to life of Star Wars. A Beast's Love is Like the Moon. This is a Love Love release from Tokyo Pop. It is a singular volume, five chapters inside. This was published back in 2021 to uh, 2022. This is a BL supernatural series written and drawn by Guri Nojiro. Tired of the fast paced city life, Izuki has agreed to take care of his uncle's house in the mountains, which are said to be visited by yokai. Izuki, dismissive of the superstition, goes exploring only to be attacked by a yokai in the woods. He's saved by a beautiful man named Haku, who claims to be the incarnation of a Komainu guardian dog. He pledges himself to Izuki and begs him to be his master. Izuki refuses at first, wanting to return to the city as quickly as possible, but is swayed by Haku's lonely eyes and brings him back to the house. Gradually, he falls into a comfortable rhythm with the pushy but devoted Haku while living under the same roof, and Izuki wonders if he really wants to return to the city as he thought. However, Haku harbors a secret that could put Izuki's life at risk. Honestly, this sounds like a lot of fun, and I like that they're mixing three separate things. You got a boys love series, it's supernatural in nature, and of course, I'm a sucker for yokai stories, so I'll keep my eye out for this book in particular. From Seven Seas Entertainment, we have True Love Fades Away When the Contract Ends, Volume 1. This is written by Kozuzu Kobato and art by Murasaki Shido. This manga was published in July of 2021 and it's still ongoing. It's a romance series and it follows the character of Fiona Claiborne, a headstrong young noblewoman with a passion for art. She has no interest in succumbing to the arranged marriage her father plans for her. Getting married would require her to quit her job at her uncle's art gallery and forsake her independent lifestyle. A fateful meeting with Giles Bancroft, an aloof young man and heir to the Earl, presents a way out. Giles, like Fiona, wants nothing more than to stay single, so together they hatch a scheme to achieve their common goal of avoiding marriage, pretend to be destined lovers. 
From Kodansha, we have an anticipated release by a lot of people. I See Your Face Turned Away, Volume 1. This is by Rumi Ichinohe. This manga was published back in April of 2022, and this shoujo romance series is still ongoing. One might call Hikari extraordinarily ordinary. One day, she takes up a new hobby, imagining what a romance would be like between her pretty friend Mari and the cute guy in their class, Otani. It's all in harmless fun until the roles start to get tangled in Hikari's mind. Does she really have to be just the best friend in this love story? And just who is on Otani's mind when his eyes drift away? Sounds pretty intriguing. You might want to check it out. Let me know in the comment section if you're excited for I See Your Face Turned Away. We got a rom-com shonen series by Viz Media. This is You and I, Our Polar Opposites, Volume 1. This is an ongoing series as of 2021. Story and art by Kocha Agasawa. Miyu Suzuki is a bright and bubbly high schooler who's got a crush. There's just one tiny problem when it comes to personality. The guy she's into is her polar opposite. Suzuki's a high school girl in love. The only problem is that the guy she's fallen for is pretty much her total opposite. While she's cheerful, outgoing, and always trying to fit in, her classmate Yusuke Tani is stoic and quiet and doesn't really seem to care what people think of him. Will Suzuki be able to overcome her anxieties and ask him out, or will she discover that opposites really don't attract? My Love Story with Yamada-kun at level 999, Volume 1. Finally coming out, an ongoing Jose romance series that was published back in March of 2019, still ongoing, and this is written and drawn by Mashiro. What's cool about it is that we have a brand new manga publisher in the English market, and that is Ink Lore Manga, which belongs to Penguin Random House. They are throwing their hat in the ring and trying to, uh, take a little piece of that pie and put out some cool stuff and this is one of their first releases so what a way to debut i guess my love story with yamada kun is beloved by many readers i happen to watch the anime adaptation of it and really love it this story tells of akane a college student who is dumped by her boyfriend she decides to quit the online rpg they used to play together but instead of deleting her account she logs in and battles low level enemies to release her stress and hurt feelings. There she bumps into Yamada, a player so blunt he's practically rude. As it turns out, Yamada is something of a pro gaming legend, and when Akane meets him again in real life, he's actually sensitive and kind, if oblivious. Soon the two of them are spending more time together in game and in real life. The problem is, Yamada is only interested in the game. As Akane's feelings grow, will Yamada's focus stay on the game? I love the art on this and the progression of this love story is wholesome and really nice to check out. So I do recommend my love story with Yamada-kun. Next up, we got a slice of life series that a lot of people have been waiting for, and it is finally licensed by Viz Media. We got Hirayasumi Volume 1. This is an ongoing series, first published back in April of 2021. A slice of life seinen series written and drawn by Keigo Shinzo. At 29 years old, carefree Hiroto Ikuta doesn't have a girlfriend, a full time job, or a plan for the future, and he couldn't be happier. Hiroto's breezy attitude isn't easy for everyone to understand though. In a world filled with anxiety, confusion, and grief, Hiroto and the people who surround him are all just doing their best to figure out this thing called life. After developing an unlikely friendship with the grouchy old granny who lives in his neighborhood, Hiroto suddenly finds himself inheriting not just her house, but some rather difficult emotions as well. His 18-year-old cousin Natsumi moves in with him, but as a struggling art student, she has her own troubles to deal with and may just put Hiroto's easygoing lifestyle to the test. The art on this is great, and I love me some slice of life. This is an ongoing series, so do plan accordingly, because you will be getting a lot of books from Hirayasumi. Just saying. From Yen Press, we have She Likes Gays, But Not Me, Volume 1. That, now, that's a title. Uh, this is a school drama Jose series that was first published back in January of 2019, and it ran for a total of 13 chapters collected across three volumes. This is written by Naoto Asahara, with art by Akira Hirahara, based on the critically acclaimed novel High Schooler Atsushi Ando Has Always Hidden the Fact That He's Gay. But one day, 
he sees his classmate Sai Miura with a BL book, a small moment with major consequences. Atsushi longs for a normal happiness with a loving wife and a biological child, but what can he do when he's not turned on by women? Also from Yen Press, we are getting the first volume of Friday at the Atelier. This is a romance seinen series published from 2019 all the way to 2022, so it ran for 39 chapters collected across four volumes, so not a huge commitment on your shelf. With story and art by Sakura Hamada, Tamaki, a woman who's grown tired with her life, is one day asked by the famous painter Shinzui Ishihara to become his model. Not just any model that is, a nude model. But when she accepts without hesitation, Ishihara is taken by her peculiar response and somehow falls for her. This misaligned love life between an oblivious girl and a handsome but extremely self-conscious artist begins here. I don't know much about this series, but I do remember people being excited when it was first announced, so I am happy for those people, and I actually do want to check it out. It sounds pretty interesting, wacky, and out of the norm. That's how I typically look like my romantic series, I guess. From Seven Seas Entertainment, we have My Girlfriend's Not Here Today, Volume 1. This is a GL ongoing series which was published back in 2021. Story and art by Kyoko Iwami. Pent up and tired of her apathetic girlfriend, Asahina Yuni turns to an anonymous online account to let it all out. It's just another day of doom scrolling after class when Asahina gets swept away in conversation with the beautiful outgoing Taki. When Taki turns out to be following Asahina's private account, it's cute, right? Taki would never blackmail Asahina, right? With every new lie, the web of secrets and erotic desire grows ever tighter. Man, I'm just gonna say, don't ever anonymously call people out online because it will find a way to backfire. So it's gonna be interesting to see how the story develops. Check out My Girlfriend's Not Here Today from uh, Seven Seas. Yen Press is putting out The Kept Man of the Princess Knight, Volume 1. This is an ongoing series, first published in September of 2022, based on the light novel of the same name. It's an action fantasy seinen series, written by Toru Shirogane, with art by Kei Yang. Hope I pronounced that correctly. The Labyrinth Calls, and is answered by adventurers, profiteers, and anyone looking to make a quick buck. And in this town, inhabited by the dregs of society, live a man and the woman who owns him, Arwen, the princess knight with lofty dreams of restoring her homeland, and Matthew, the town drunk. As Arwen challenges the labyrinth, Matthew spends his days in taverns and brothels living off the money he gets from her, but the town laughingstock has a side that no one knows about. In service of Arwen, Matthew would do anything, no matter how dirty he might get. And this, this manga right here, is actually one of my most anticipated books of the whole year. This is by Nujima. Finally, we have Mysterious Disappearances, Volume 1. This is being put out by Seven Seas Entertainment. It's an ongoing mystery supernatural seinen series. It debuted back in October of 2019. And this one is pretty interesting. Burnt out novelist Ogawa Sumireko and demon boy Arashi no Ren are out to collect as many mysteries as possible. But what are mysteries? They're objects, not just secrets. There are things like the elixir of the moon, which restores one's youth. The songs of another world, which must never be uttered aloud. The curious report of the enchanted land, which contains the testimonies of those who have been spirited away. Now in present Tokyo, these mysteries and more are reappearing in the form of urban legends. Our two main protagonists are out to collect as many as possible, but Sumireko has a knack for not just finding, but triggering the magical effects of the mysteries. Will she survive her brush with the supernatural? So the anime actually dropped before the release of this manga stateside and the show has been a lot of fun. I do want to point something out. It does have not safe for work content sprinkled throughout. So not a recommendation for everybody. But if you like stuff like Call of the Night, for example, from Kotoyama, you might like Mysterious Disappearances. I personally love the whole urban legends and Japanese folklore and all that stuff. This is right up my alley, and the art style is fantastic. I love the character models for this. If you're in the mood for some spooky mystery supernatural series, then check out Mysterious Disappearances. 
Kodansha has another BL series, The Yearning Fox Lies in Wait. This is a supernatural story, by the way, published from 2018 to 2019. Six chapters collected across one singular volume, story and art by Enmuda. The year is 1920, the ninth year of the Taisho period. Lifelong philomath Kiyo Fukasaku is ecstatic when he's admitted into the Imperial University and can't wait to begin his new life in the nation's capital, that is, until he gets lost and already finds himself on hard times on his first day in the big city. Luckily, he runs into Ozaki, an eccentric, seemingly well-off man who invites Kiyo to stay in his mansion after he learns about his financial troubles. But there's more to the handsome stranger than meets the eye. Turns out that Ozaki is a fox spirit who had some sort of connection to Kiyo's grandfather, Seishiro, and he invites Kiyo to live with him as a way to repay Seishiro's kindness. But just what kind what kind of relationship did Ozaki and Seishiro have and what does it mean for Ozaki and Kyo? We got another supernatural twist to these romantic stories and I do want to check this out. Sounds pretty cool. We got another new manga publisher in the English market. That is awesome. The more the merrier. I love that. We have the obscure, kind of niche, but somewhat important release that is Her Frankenstein. This is a horror anthology published back in the 80s, and this is written and drawn by Norikazu Kawashima. Now, the new publisher is from Living the Line. They made a new manga imprint called Smoke. Smudge. Smudge is dedicated to publishing pulp, horror, and dark mystery manga curated and translated into English by award-winning historian Ryan Holmberg. So what is Her Frankenstein about? It is described as a psycho horror classic that follows little Tetsuo, a wimpy mess. His parents don't love him. He meets the beautiful Kimiko, an ailing teenage girl obsessed with movies and mayhem in equal amounts. She doesn't love Tetsuo either, or any other than herself, but she needs him. So Tetsuo becomes the man she wants, the monster she wants. He becomes Her Frankenstein. I made that as cheesy as possible, so do forgive me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, a lot of people have been talking about this. This was published in the 80s, 1986 to be precise. And this was labeled as uh, the finale to the cult era in Japanese horror comics. So if you're a fan of that historical aspect of old manga, I think you need to grab this for uh, your collection. Regardless, it looks super interesting. And I like the whole horror Frankenstein aspect. So I kind of do want to check this out. So welcome aboard uh, Smudge and Living the Line. I hope they survive the experience of publishing manga. Next up is Turns Out My Online Friend Is My Real Life Boss, Volume 1. This is also written by Enmura, who did The Yearning Fox Lies in Wait, also being published by Kodansha. This is an ongoing BL comedy series, which was first published back in 2020. Follows the character of Hashimoto, a perfectly average salaryman, working a repetitive office job, made all the worse by his stylish, straight-laced boss who insists everything be done by the book. Whatever he does for this perfectionist is just not good enough. Thankfully, Hashimoto can go home to his favorite online video game where he can unload on the forgiving shoulders of his best friend, whom he knows only by the name Uma. The duo make plans to meet in person, but when they do, Hashimoto is horrified by a revelation that will change his entire life. I am so excited for this. The plot sounds amazingly funny, and I do want to check out the awkwardness that forms between the two characters. So yeah, definitely sign me up. I will eventually check out. Uh, turns out my online friend is my real life boss. That would be awkward in real life too. We have another Love Love Tokyo Pop release. The genius puppeteer loves the Holy Knight fiercely. This is a BL fantasy series published in 2022, ran for six chapters, and it's collected in one singular volume. Story and art by Hatoba Kogarashi. As a high-ranking general captured after the end of a war, the Holy Knight Gilbert braces for execution. When, at the last moment, his life is saved by Chris, the anime nation's master artificer and puppeteer. 
Tahir, an arrogant, wickedly playful man who surrounds himself with only dolls of his own making. Chris claims to admire the beauty of Gilbert's soul and intends to use him to create his newest masterpiece. When Gilbert refuses to go along with Chris's plan, he is forced to choose between certain death and forsaking his faith to become an immortal doll. Hoping to buy enough time to make his escape, Gilbert instead offers himself up to Chris as a slave. But if that's the game this knight wishes to play, then Chris fully intends on toying with him until Gilbert breaks to his will. So that one is a pretty interesting fantasy series to end the video on. I'm curious to know what will happen to those two. Hopefully something romantic and wholesome, right? <laughs> So yeah, that's going to be it for now. Thank you everybody for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. I truly do appreciate it. Out of these 20 manga, which ones are your favorite? And of course, there are a bunch of others that I did not talk about because there are uh, volumes twos and threes and 40s and I'm not going to recommend that for new manga buyers out there. I wanted to highlight some of the, the brand spanking new releases. So if you could do me a nice favor, hit the like button, share the video, that would mean a ton. Thank you again so very much for the continued support. That's going to be it for now. God bless. Stay safe out there. I will catch all of you on our next video.